Right, hi there. Today we're gonna look at taking the suspension off this Audi TT, it's a Mach 1. It's a 1 1.8 turbo, 225 brake. Uh, apologies for um, the, the darkness. Um, it's getting darker in the evenings and so I've got a lot of option. I have got this light that I bought from, um, I think it was Screwfix. So that will have to do today. But what I've done is I've just loosened the uh, bolts for the wheels. They're all 17 mil. Just make sure you've got your um, locking nut so that you can undo that properly. Um, then jack it up a little bit once they're all loose and then I'm gonna take the wheel off. Right, so I've just put the wheel over there for the time being. Um, what I'm trying to get to is where that mark is because I've taken my car to get its MOT and it failed on this bush over here. So that's what we're replacing. But it's not simple to be able to just replace that. It makes more sense to replace both of them. So you've got another one. We'll just go this side. It's that bushing there. And then it's also attached to your main knuckle. Um, if I can just move this back, which is there, not there. Uh, there, sorry. Stupid light in the way. That's what it's attached to. And that is where you can make your adjustment for your camber. So really what we want to be able to do is get this off without touching these uh, because that's where the camber is already set up. So I'm going to look at what I need for both of those bolts and then what I can do to get this off. So I've just gone to... Oh, there we go, that's better just going to clean the underside of this and you'll see that there's a gap on all three of those and that is where you can set your camber um, which will affect how your wheel sits um, it will either pull it out or, or straighten it up or pull it in slightly so you want to make sure that you've either taken a picture or got a measurement off them so you know exactly how to put that back on now I'm just a little bit concerned because as we go over here there is this bolt which I believe is 18 mil which I still find a bit strange but there isn't any way to get to the other side of that bolt so I'm wondering if that is then threaded on the inside somewhere and when we start to mess about with it that thread will break which won't be a fun job this one is a little bit oh sorry <laughs> Uh, this one's a little bit easier to get to. You've got that and the top side, which if I just put my camera light on, there we go, which I've just squirted a load of um, WD-40 on. So that should hopefully loosen it up and make it a bit easier to get off. But yeah, we're gonna have a go now. So I'm gonna start with this bolt here and just start to loosen it. So I'll let you know how I get on. So as you can see, I've got the hammer out. Um, and what I've done, we go this side, as you can see, I've actually got a 17 mil on it and I, I've hammered it onto the side of it. So this probably isn't best practice, but it's just the way to get it moving, which it has done. I've got a lot of WD-40 on it. it. Started tapping that on with a hammer to get it on and then just tapping the edge and uh, eventually started wiggling and you just have to wiggle it back and forth and uh, hopefully that will do the trick. So now what I'm doing is using my half inch breaker bar and an 18 mil socket and just slowly turning this. So you should be able to see. There we go. That's slowly coming undone. So that's good you don't want to rush these they've been on there for ages and so they are going to be really rusty so just take your time and just make sure you're not cross threading anything or or uh, potentially damaging the bolt because the last thing you want to do is be searching around for these types of bolts they're usually quite particular and uh, even from a, a scrappy they can cost a bit of money so yeah just take your time um, Really, there usually isn't a massive rush to get this done because uh, you'll be leaving your car up 
to try and get this done and maybe paint it and take some of the rust off. So yeah, I'll let you know when I've done that part. All right, so if you have a look, this is the bolt that I've just got out of this bushing here. Now, if you see the ends of it, see how rusty that end part is. Um, the rest of it, I think, is in the bushing itself, and that's why it's so clean. Um, so what I suggest doing is if you're going to reuse these, just get a wire brush, or if you can get a drill attachment, a wire brush drill uh, bit, and just clean them up make it easier for when it goes back on but that one's out we've got this one to have a look at and then we'll look at pushing this down so you can see that I've got it up here what I want to do is start hitting this part here because there's not enough access to really hit the top to hopefully just push it down and out but yeah I'll tell you what this one is oh also this felt very loose on an 18 mil socket. So I think that's 17 mil, but it was far too tight for my 17 mil. Now, whether or not that's just because I've been uh, messing about with my 17 mil and it doesn't really fit, or that there's just a bit too much corrosion on here. And if I was to clean them up properly, it would be 17 mil. So just bear that in mind to have an 18 and 17 handy. Uh, if you start to see that the edges are starting to round off uh, and you can kind of see a little bit here where it's a bit shiny. Oh, sorry there where it's a bit shiny they they are just a little bit worn then stop and try and get a 17 it's better to go a smaller size than a bigger one you don't want to be rounding these off and spending ages then trying to uh, get something to get it out properly right just going to shine my light there but this is the one I'm trying to undo now what you need to do is get an adjustable or a I think it's 18 mil again it's like a really weird in between 17 and 18 but I'm using a small adjustable just uh, this here and just putting it on the top to lay in between and then using my ratchet with an 18 on the bottom to try and wiggle it out now it has taken a bit of force to get it started but after a lot of WD-40 it's now coming off so just be aware that this one might be a bit trickier than the others. Right, so both bolts are out now. And what I can do is I can move the steering column back and forth. So I can move, if I just move the disc, I can shimmy it out. As you can see there, that's nearly come out. But I still need to get some pressure on here and hopefully get that off. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna use a hammer um, and yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna hit it with the hammer and hopefully that will uh, make it drop down. So I've still had a bit of an issue trying to get this off and what I've realized is actually, I am not able to get it off because of the way that that bush is mounted, it's facing up and down and this is facing side to side so that would rotate back and forth but that's not going to give us enough to actually get it out so what we're going to have to do is undo this one push that tie rod down get out of the way and then we'll be able to maneuver it out so again i think it's probably like 18. here's my 17. no oh, and that actually fits on there so uh that's because that's 19. let me check my 18. Take it off there. So my 18 doesn't fit. So I'm going to try 90 to see if we can start taking it off. If you're struggling like I was to get it off, what I've done is I've I've just undone it now. But I um, tightened the nut up so the end of the bolt was flush with the top of the nut, and then I've just hit it with a hammer quite direct on the top. And that's forced it down. You don't want to do it too many times because that will start to ruin the threads. Then you'll be looking at getting a new tie rod. Not too expensive, maybe 10 to 20 pounds. Uh, but if you can avoid having to do it, if you don't need to, then um, yeah, try it that way. Or the other way is to uh, hit it on the side here. And that sort of shock should let it then push down. It's more trial and error though. So after a bit of wiggling to try to get it out and using a pry bar just up here 
and sort of shimming it. It's now come out. So we're still on here, but we should be able to get that off now. So now maybe a few light taps and that might take that off. I'll try that now. So I ended up using a little claw hammer and I was hitting it on the side just like that a few times and then try to hit it on the head a little bit and that's just dropped now. So that's perfect. Undo that and then I'm ready to, to start prepping it. All right, so here it is. This is the offending bush here. Um, I have to be honest, apart from, I suppose you've got quite a bit of damage there, but that's gonna get replaced. This one is also gonna get replaced just because I'm doing this one, I might as well do that one. And uh, this ball joint isn't too bad, to be honest. I have got another one, so I will think about whether or not I'm gonna change it. It's just making sure that this is kept the same. Now, I was thinking about how I'm going to measure it, and I guess the best way is to use um, uh, a vernier, and uh, I can just gauge where they are on each section and then um, how much room it's taken up. And then if I decide to do it, great. If I don't, then that's fine too. What I am gonna do now, while I've got it off, you can see it's a bit rusty. Most of that's just surface rust. I'm gonna clear it up, clean it up anyway, just using a wire brush on a grinder. And um, hopefully that'll make it look a lot nicer. And then I might spray it with some uh, galf spray. And then I've got some uh, Hammerite I put over the top. Uh, to be honest, you don't need to do that at all. It, it's just a look, but it doesn't really do too much. Uh, it might prevent it from getting as rusty in the future. But these take so much wear because they're at the bottom of your car that eventually it will return back to this. So don't uh, don't spend too long on it, really. Getting the bushings out. Maybe I'll just talk about that now. Uh, what I'm going to do is I've got a press at work so I'm gonna put that in the press and pop, pop it out there are two options if you're doing that at home um, you can get a bit of tube same diameter as this the outside you can get um, a bit of threaded bar a couple of nuts and washers and almost pull it out as you're winding in um, the threaded bar I've tried that before. I tried it on a Mazda MX-5 and it did work for one of them. Uh, the other one, it started bending the, uh, it started ruining the threads and bending the threaded bar. Uh, and then the last one, what you can do is set fire to it. Um, it makes a lot of smoke. It's not very good for the environment. Uh, but it is an option if you're out of all ideas and you can do it in a safe environment where it's in a controlled manner um, and that will get rid of it. You'd have to then thoroughly clean the inside of it, uh, making sure all the debris is out of it and then you can start to insert the new one. Again, it will be tight because their bushings are meant to be tight. So you will have to then press it into place. Using a hammer isn't a great idea. Um, you want to try and get it square. You can get it in there. Um, you don't really want to damage them on the way in because you end up just then having uh, them fail prematurely. But it's just an option. So I'll end this video now um, and I might show you uh, at the end of this video actually, I might just show what I've done and what I've replaced. Right, so this is after I've just cleaned it up with a wire brush and then I used a flappy disc on the grinder just to clean it up a bit further and these are the parts that I've got the replacement parts that's my Moog so that is a new one uh, it's surprisingly light it doesn't it feels like cast it's out a bit and I guess the inner bit would be the same um, but that's going to replace that and then we've got this just open it up, bear with me. Oh. 
show you the wall. Now that doesn't look right to me. So, I may have ordered the wrong part, <laughs> which is great. Because <laughs> that looks totally different. And that is way thinner. So it's a good job I haven't pushed that one out. So what I have to do is contact Euro Car Parts and see what other bits they got. Now these were two pounds each and I've just opened that one. So how do we give that back? And then this, which I haven't opened yet, is a replacement part for this. So again, if you're gonna think about changing it, just get an idea of how much gap you've got there on all three of them, if they're all the same, good. I think they should all be the same. And then put that on. Um, look, it, it doesn't matter massively if you move it about slightly. You just might want to go to a garage uh, that have got a wheel alignment and get your front wheel alignment checked and tell them that you've moved the camber adjustment and then they they'll know to move that back. Right, so put a bit of hammerite paint on it. I put the new uh, bush in and I'm just gonna put the new ball joint uh, and then we're gonna uh, offer it up onto the car. So I'm just gonna do the ball joint now. I kept an idea of where the uh, pins had to go and that was sort of right at the back here on those three so that's what I'm going to do um, and then I'll just check it against the picture that I took and also the measurement that I took so I've got the new one on there now but I just want to show you guys why it's good to keep some of the old hardware and the reason for it is if you look here so this is the old one that I've kept but if you look at the new one, can you see how bent that looks? And if I go to put it on here, now this was on here like, um, well, so I'm even struggling to get it back on now. It was like that, but it just goes tight. And that's because it's almost like an oval shape. It's not quite round. I don't know if the camera can pick it up that well, but it's pretty poor. Whereas this, although it's bent, ever so slightly on the top that screws on so easily and that's kind of what you want um, I think this has a bit of nylock at the top and that's that's what's damaged but on here it doesn't have any ny nylock so I'm not going to use that I'm not going to bother to use that at all I want to be able to get this off if I can and I think that's going to start to either ruin the thread or I'm going to have a massive job of getting that off next time I want to alright so it's just starting to get dark again so I've got the light out so we can get a better idea of what's going on um, if you just unscrew this and then push it <laughs> try not to push yourself into it but just push it out then gives you all the access you like to be able to do whatever you need to do and we're going to try and offer this piece up get it sort of in the right position and then we can think about putting that back at some point so that's what I'm going to do now A stand for the camera for my phone. I'm just going to try and put this in and show you how I'm doing it. So I want to get this side in really fast because that was the most difficult side. So that shimmies in. Just move this out the way and got to sort of lift it up and then into place. So again, just pull this back out. There we go. That's up. What you might also need is a rubber mallet. That way you won't damage the uh, metal or, or the paper. So I'm just gonna grab that. Right, here we go. I 
think we're pretty much there. So I'm just gonna get this on too. If I can undo the bolt at the same time. That's great. So I'm pushing this down. There we go. And I'm just gonna lightly put this on. Super. Now I'm gonna rush back and get the other bolts. No, I'm not there here. So you probably can't see. Oh stupid. Lights in the way. Move that up. You might not be able to see, but I've cleared up. I'm gonna zoom back out. Look at this. There we go. You can kind of see that they're cleaned up. Uh, just use the wire brush on them, make them clean. So that's the same thing I'm gonna do. more there sorry guys that might be a bit better so I'm also going to get the podger here we go so I want to make sure that everything's lined up before I start finalizing stuff so I can tell that, that is not lined up. Now I've got my podger. And I don't want to go too far because I don't want to start ruining the threads, but that's okay. So I'm just going to offer up this. And I'll tell you what, that's the wrong bloody bolt. There we go. And that is turning in lovely. So let's see if we can do the same thing. Now, I might not have enough space here to do this. So I might just have to offer up the bolt. Now I'm sort of initially it. I thought I'd keep the camera rolling so you can see how long it actually takes. There's no point me switching on and off to show you just what I've done. You might as well get an idea of sort of the fight you have sometimes with bits and bits and pieces. So let me just see if I put this on here, if that's going to help it at all. Oh, that's just going to help it. That's not. Okay. Let's see if I can use the mallet. Let's see where that hole is. is go and get a smaller uh, sort of podger bar and see if I can uh, see if I can sort this out where we want to be which I just think is a bit bizarre I expected it to be way more in right. not trying to damage the threads I'm just gonna hit it up and yeah we're in so that wasn't too bad so again <laughs> you can grab the bolt you still have to maneuver your hand up and over, maybe drop the bolt down and start turning it up. Again, I try to clean this up as much as I could so that it should be quite easy to get back on, which it is, which is nice. So, okay, that is really the gist of it. Just going to show you what else. Maybe it's better if I have it hanging up here. 
do apologise. I should have sorted this out all before. There we go. Hopefully that's a bit better for everyone. You can see what's actually happening. So we've got to turn this back. Get this back in place. Bam, get that up and get that bolt, get that nut, sorry. Just get it started on there. So, that started, that's perfect. Now, it's just a case of tightening it up. So, I'll be honest, I don't actually know what the torque uh, settings are for any of these bolts. I'm just gonna make sure they're tight. And um, yeah, hope for the best, really. So, uh, I'll let you know when I've done that. Right, so I've tightened everything up. I've used the breaker bar to tighten it. I have got a torque wrench, but I won't be using that. Um, you just have to make sure that it is properly tight and everything. Uh, as I was tightening this up, the bolt inside was spinning. So I'm using, I believe this is a T30. No, it's a T40. T40 bit to hold it in place and then just using the um, uh, the ring side of the spanner, the 19 mil, to tighten it up. Um, after it gets to a certain point, it's almost wedged up there, it acts like a taper, and then you'll be able to do it without needing to use this. So that's what I'm doing at the moment, and then we should be all good to go. Last thing I am gonna do is just repaint some of the parts that has got scuff marks on from where it's been dropped or uh, accidentally banged and um, I'll just make it look a little bit prettier so that's basically it that's what I'm gonna wrap it up as um, hopefully you've enjoyed the video and found it informative and just give me feedback if you want to see something else let me know um, if you think I've done it wrong also let me know um, anything's good so thanks a lot for, for watching cheers